Welcome back to Introduction to Computational Chemistry at Valparaiso University. This session will focus on doing frequency calculations and obtaining a vibrational analysis of the molecular structure that we've calculated using Gaussian 09. A successful Gaussian 09 optimization gives us the coordinates and energy of a molecular structure in which the forces on all the atoms are approximately zero. Oh. What this means is that the structure is what we call an equilibrium structure. Equilibrium means the forces are zero. But it's important to remember that there are two kinds of equilibrium structures, stable and unstable. The simple difference is this. For a stable equilibrium structure, if we displace the atoms a little bit, they go back toward their equilibrium positions so that the structure returns to its equilibrium uh, arrangement and this is referred to as a minimum energy structure. Imagine a marble sitting at the bottom of a bowl. If the marble is pushed in one direction or another, it returns toward the bottom of the bowl. Now an unstable equilibrium is one where after small atomic displacements are made, the structure changes to reach a lower energy structure. Uh, here you can again think of the marble and the bowl, but flip the bowl upside down and put the marble on top of the bowl. You might be able to balance it there, but if you nudge it in one direction, it rolls downhill and falls off. These kinds of structures are referred to as saddle points in the potential energy, or chemists call these things transition states because they often represent these unstable structures that a molecule goes through when it's changing its conformation from one to another. Calculating the frequencies of all possible vibrational modes of a molecule will tell us which kind of equilibrium that we have. So it's always a good idea to do this. Not just to do a geometry optimization, but to also follow up that optimization by doing a frequency calculation. So let's illustrate this by repeating our optimizations of the two 1,3-butadiene conformers. But now we're going to use the opt plus freak calculation type because it'll do both an optimization and a frequency calculation all in one calculation. So since I have done already the calculation for the optimization of the geometry of the trans-butadiene, 1,3-butadiene uh, structure at the AM1 level, I will just open up that file and I'm now going to repeat the calculation using the opt plus freak job type. Okay, What I had done before was just the optimization. So now you go over here and choose opt plus freak. We could just do the frequency calculation since the optimization is done already, but since it doesn't take very long, I want to use this as an example of what you should usually do for any molecule, not just the optimization, but also a frequency. We're optimizing it to a minimum. <coughs> the method stays the same, semi-empirical AM1. I'm not going to change the job title, and so everything else stays the same. So we submit this. We're going to submit this file, right? And while it's running, I'll minimize my PowerPoint file here. And we'll get a message in just a minute that'll show us that it's finished the calculation. So the point here is that Gaussian is now finding not just the uh, equilibrium structure, but after it finds that, then it's going to do a special calculation where it figures out the frequencies of all the possible molecular vibrations and rotations that there are, uh, that are possible. So if we open up the log file, we'll see that it took six steps in order to reach the optimization, and very, very small changes. Okay, there's the sixth right there. And so when you get to the optimized structure, you can now go to results. And of course, we can review the results summary like we did before, and that will give us the same energy that we found before. But the additional thing we can do is view the vibrations. And this is a really neat dialog box. So I'm going to expand it just a little bit and move it off to the side so that it won't interfere with visualizing these vibrations. Gauss view allows us to visualize these. And so 
what we start off with here is noticing that all of the frequencies starting with the lowest and going toward the highest and these frequencies are in inverse centimeters uh, which is what chemists usually use to measure vibrational frequencies uh, they all are positive all the values are positive and that means before we even look at any of these we know that this is a stable equilibrium structure any kind of displacement of an atom causes that atom to come back toward its equilibrium position which means it's got a positive vibrational frequency but if we look at these by using the start animation tool we can see we can visualize what each of these vibrational frequencies corresponds to and so you can see here uh, this lowest one is a rotation about the CC single bond uh, with the two ends of the molecule rotating around that bond and if we go over here and use the down arrow we can scroll through each of these vibrational frequency modes and see not only what the frequency is that's been calculated but also the spatial vibrational character of each of these modes and so if we quickly scroll all the way through to the highest ones the vibrational frequencies around 3200 inverse centimeters those are carbon hydrogen stretches of different sorts and then there's going to be a cluster of a couple of vibrations here which are vibrations of the carbon carbon double bonds around 1800 inverse centimeters right there and now we have some uh, bending modes associated with the carbon atom and two adjacent hydrogen atoms and those those have different spatial uh, character to them but they're all very similar and then we can see quite a few different versions of that and as we go to lower and lower frequencies we can see different kinds of modes of vibration so this is very useful uh, not only in determining whether you have a stable equilibrium structure but it's also useful in interpreting the results that you might get through an experimental infrared spectrum and that's also one of the cool things I'll show you down here there's a spectrum tool and if we choose that we can see an infrared spectrum a calculated infrared spectrum associated with this molecule and so if we go to full screen the IR spectrum is plotting the infrared uh, spectral intensity versus the frequency in these units of inverse centimeters now uh, if you've done these kinds of uh, experimental measurements you'll realize that a lot of commercial instruments plot the uh, uh, peaks downward because they really represent absorption peaks uh, where infrared radiation is sent into the sample and we're looking at the frequencies at which absorption happens because the absorption of the infrared radiation is what causes the molecules to vibrate and also you'll probably recognize that the frequency axis is turned around from what you often get experimentally where it often goes from higher frequency on the left to lower frequency on the right nevertheless this kind of spectrum uh, can be useful in looking at the results of experiments where what you have in the sample is unknown and you want to try to figure out what kinds of substances uh, are in the sample so you could calculate the infrared uh, spectrum and then try to match that up with what you see in the experiment uh, to detect whether a particular molecule is actually present in the sample okay so for our purposes the most important thing is that we verified that this trans uh, conformer was indeed an equilibrium structure so let's do the same thing now uh, and it was a stable equilibrium structure let's do the same thing now for the cis and so we're going to open up the file for the cis 1,3-butadiene AM1 input file alright so here it is and now it's got that planar character to it now we're going to uh, calculate but we're changing the job type now to opt plus freak okay if you did this before uh, yours might just say opt mine uh, says opt plus freak so that's what I want to make sure that's been selected the method is the same and so on so I'm gonna submit this we're gonna submit it and see what happens in the case of this cis conformer you might have noticed looking at it that although uh, planar molecules exist in, in a lot of cases in nature it's a little 
uh, unusual to look at this one and see these two hydrogens here uh, so close together because we know that those hydrogens are going to have a partial positive charge and you might think uh, that there should be some repulsion there okay so the calculations done now let's look at the intermediate geometries all right so here is the result and again it's uh, what we saw before if we were to uh, look through the different steps from the initial structure two three four five six seven all right we would see uh, again that the planar nature of the structure has been preserved but now when we look at the vibrations ha what we see is that the first vibrational frequency that's listed in this menu box and I'll move the arrow so you can see it for sure is listed as a negative frequency now there's no no such thing really as a negative frequency but what happens computationally is if one particular vibrational mode actually leads to an unstable uh, an instability in the structure then when Gaussian does that calculation it turns out to be an imaginary frequency because the curvature of the potential energy surface is like the top of a bowl where the curvature instead of being positive upwards is now uh, downwards which is a negative value and so the uh, frequency is imaginary in in Gauss view it's displayed as a negative value and what that means is that this structure is an unstable equilibrium with respect to this particular motion of the atomic coordinates so let's start the animation and see what happens and sure enough what you can see here and I'm just gonna slow the animation frequency down a little bit so it's not so crazy we can look at it more carefully what you can see is apparently this structure is not stable in the planar geometry and just like we said a few minutes ago those two hydrogens right here and right here they both have partial positive charges and so it's going to minimize the energy of the molecule if they can move away from each other a little bit and the easiest way for them to do that is for the planar nature of the molecule to distort just slightly so those two atoms are going to move away from each other so what that means is that this cis conformer is really not a stable equilibrium structure and therefore it's not something that would exist in nature except maybe as a very very short-lived kind of uh, intermediate so it's important to do these vibrational frequency analyses uh, so that we can interpret our results and understand what they're telling us in our next session what we're going to do is look at the 13 butadiene case in a little more detail and see if we can figure out instead of this cis conformer what conformer is it that looks like this but has the displacement away from the planar geometry and actually is a stable equilibrium structure I hope this has been helpful